The 22nd of Nov, 93, an event was to happen of such earth-shattering proportions that it was to shatter the earth to its very proportions. David Attenborough should take a leaf out of Johnny Morris's book and do a few funny voices when he meets those animals. Cheer us all up a bit. My favourite colour is red. Although, lately, I've actually enjoyed looking at green. So, Victor goes into the bathroom as Mrs. Meldrew's coming out, and he sees there's another man in there. Uh, and what, what was he doing in there? Well, of course, we know, the viewer, that he's in there for legitimate reasons, but uh, Victor says, well, what the hell do you, do you think you're doing? Very funny. That's what I did last night, anyway. Here's Hawkwind. What's your favourite burrowing animal? Uh, drop us a line and let us know. Uh, mine's the rabbit. Finders keepers, losers weepers. The Elgin marble are ours. Got that, Greeks? Good. You're listening to Radio Over the years, we've enjoyed a long and magnetastically fruitful relationship with Radio Fab. However, over recent months, we've found that we cannot any longer agree with the current backstab atrocious policies being conducted by the new gaffer of the station, Mr. John Burke. We certainly can't. We therefore emphatically announce that hereto-forth, from this date, the 22nd of Nov, 1993, we do most humbly resign from the aforementioned station, Radio Fab FM. What is the nature of your disagreement with the manager? You've heard our statement. We have nothing more to add at this stage. Except that uh, I'd just like to add at this stage that I'm absolutely flabbergasted at being resigned. <laughs> Since leaving Fab FM, Nicey and I have been cooperating in the making of this progumentary film about ourselves and our lives, for people to enjoy and relish and savour in perpetuity and afterwards. Well, uh, here I am at home on my funny farmstead in French and Wood. Uh, this is my farmstead kitchen. It's clean, isn't it? This is my pride and joy, my Mercedes 500 SL. I'd always wanted a sports car. I used to dream of zooming down open roads at top speed when I was a kid. Now that dream's come true. I would drive myself, of course, but I haven't passed my test yet. We're off to see my great mate, Nicey. I, Dave Nice, live in a quiet village and I keep myself to myself and just sort of try and blend in. Please, my darling. Ta, see you tomorrow. This it. We're always a, a popping over to each other's houses because, as Tony the Frosty's Tiger would say, we're great mates. Welcome to my humble abode, great mate. You're late. Come in. Thanks, great mate. Feet. Right. This way, old buddy. Hobble in the loo. Who's your friend, Nicey? Have a good journey here, mate. A yarn bungus, too. Any bungus. trouble finding the place? Of course not, great mate. I've been here so many times before. Right, of course. We really are great, great mates, aren't we, mate? Great, great mates, great mate. What great lives we've had in the world of pop and rock. So, how did it all start for you, Smashy? Well... I was an only child. Uh, 
quite a sickly child, sort of ill quite a lot. I didn't play out much. I didn't really like mud. Dad did. Ah, my birthday. Dad's present. I wasn't a very rough boy, really. I preferred gentle, soft toys to rough things. This is my childhood bedroom. Uh, when I left home, I made mother preserve it. And uh, when I moved here to me funny farmstead, I had everything transferred and recreated. Look at these fellas here. Aren't they great? I trapped them in the garden and preserved them for eternity so they could be my friends. Oh, look, now this is fascinating. Uh, on this, I used to record sort of half a conversation and then play it back and have a little chitter-chatter with myself. I love that. Hello, Mike. I remember it all. Hello, Mike. Are you my best friend? Yes. Are you my best friend? Yes. Good. What have you been doing today? I've been hiding from Billy Goat Graff. So have I. Can I come and have tea with you tonight? Of course you can. Will you always be my best friend? Of course I will. Forever and ever? Yes. Don't you wish that you'd had a childhood like mine? So, nicely, when did the pearly gate-type doors of pop first smother you with their majestic cloak? In 1963, mate. Right, was that when you were a presenter of a pop and youth-type prog on telly? <laughs> Tis true. It was almost the 60s version of the word, only better. <laughs> Hello, children. Brr, it's cold, isn't it? I'm going to warm up by dancing with Freddy and the Dreamers. Oh, thanks, Chris. You're welcome. You were made for me. Everybody tells me so. You were made for me. No, me can the two down now. All the flowers in the field are made to please the beach. All the fish in summer made the rivers and Freddie was my most glorious introduction to pop. I remember the morn after the show, I got up and looked at myself in the mirror and said, mate, you're a great bloke. You really are a great bloke. Open your gorgeous eyes and look. Pop's here. Look, I pondered to myself. Look, you great, big, beautiful, blue-eyed, lovely man. You were put upon this earth to be one of the world's great philosophers to teach people about the meaning of life type stuff, to show them how to make a curious sense of this crazy world in which we live in type scenario. With pop as your vehicle, you can speak to the nation, for that is your purpose. now with the Beatles and it's not just the girls who love you a lot of boys do too does that bother you not as well as I'd like to know you Paul <laughs> now it's not just your music that's attractive boys you are too especially you Paul aren't you <laughs> you're very good looking a very handsome young man what are you doing after the show? Would you like to come out? Well, arrange that, you know, just before the end of the show, how are we going to go down, you know, see which is the best way. Mm -hmm. mm, yes, that's not quite what I meant, George. <laughs> you look so young on that prog, mate. Uh, just like you do this here painting. Ha <laughs> ha! It's a photo, mate. Really? When was it taken? Last week. Caramba! For quite the surprise. Well, it's just, uh, you look so young, mate, your hair, uh, face type stuff. The uh, camera never lies, mate. Uh, true, uh, airbrushed mongously true. And like me, you were once young, weren't you, Smashy? Uh. 
Of course, Mike Smash wasn't actually a DJ at first. He was, in fact, one of the greatest thespians of our time, in a bit part mongers type way. Sorry, I know what's the rush, been a murder? Well, one more night over, Sarge. I'll sit down in the canteen for a cuppa. Inside tennis on your beach? Yes, why? I should make the arrangements to go out tomorrow. Station Inspector will want to see you. What's the mystery, sir? The only mystery is where you were when Alderman Mayhew's house was breached. We've had 14 of these breaks at break ins in six weeks. You should have seen something, Dixon. It was a really clear night, full moon, lots of stars in the sky. Well, there were smashing a lot of stars out last stars. night. I'm not joking, Dixon. All right, sorry. All right, Perisher, come with me in the car. Lynch? Yes? They're forming a new craft patrol. I'd be delighted, sir. How would you like to join it? I'd be delighted, sir. Right you are, then. Six o'clock Monday morning, Newtown. Sorry. Then going on then. Going on here then. I made three telly appearances, uh, all of them coptastic, but after that the parts just seemed to dry up. And then one day I was sitting at home alone in my bonkers bedsit and barking, with my life in tatters and ruins and, and quite literally shreds. Like the shreds you get in marmalade, and uh, you try and pick them up or pick them out these shreds that are your life or your marmalade and you just again in a, a sticky mess and you wish your life was a clear marmalade with no shreds uh, or royal jelly <laughs> type stuff when suddenly like a phone call out of the blue the phone went Mike Smash said the voice welcome on board little did I realize at the time that when the, the voice said on board it quite literally meant on board because on board I was to go for the next four years on board as T-Boy on pirate radio and guess who I had to brew up a cup of four you're listening to pirate radio Geraldine I'm Dave Nice said good golly it's a groovy day in the North Atlantic Tastic North Atlantic Here's the latest number from the Kings, a dedicated follower of fashion. They see him here. Right, uh, let's try that again, shall we? They see him now. Well, it is. Quite literally, life of the ocean waves in a lurch bismal type way. Of course, I broke into DJ by accident. Oh, look! Ah! Oh! Oh! And a DJ overboard there. Let's continue with the kinks and a dedicated follower of fashion. They see him here. Great days. Pirate radio really was phenomenally popular then. You're tuning in. And thanks for tuning in. This is Radio Daphne. This is Radio Radio. And the experience we gained then really did prove invaluably invaluable in honing our skills into the fine art that they are today. Indeed, and that's the trouble with these young DJs. They're crap compared to us. Of course, before I had me funny farmstead in French and Wood, I had another farmstead, which came into being with a 1967 launch of National Radio Fab. Radio Fab. Wakey, wakey, nation. This is mad Mikey Smash saying, why not pop quite literally rad to the smashy farmstead here on Britain's first national radio station. Hey, let's kick off with the move and flowers in the rain. Woke up one morning half asleep with all my blankets in a heap and yellow roses. <laughs> you know, it's a groovy morning here on the Spanish Fast Let's see if Cocky the Cockle's woken up yet. <laughs> yup, he's up. Cock of the morning to you, Cocky. Oh, no, he's woken Harold. Dog of the morning to you, Harold. Quiet, Harold. What's that? You like the move? But you prefer the Everly Brothers? <laughs> Hang on a moment, Harold. I think someone else will be bad fast if wants a word. Now, overnight, I went from being humble little old uh, Meekins to the world's favourite person, and... Uh, <laughs> Now, I know what these ones are called. Uh, they go moo, and they are cows. And they're a great, big, friendly kind of animal. 
uh, always coming up to see you. And look, this isn't funny anymore. Okay. Shoo! Uh, whoop, Bob! Bob! Hello, please. Listen, uh, there's some cows and they're quite close to me. As soon as Radio Fab started, I went from being little old humble moi to the world's favourite person. <laughs> and unlike some DJs, I never let idle chat get in the way of the music. If I talked, it was serious and about the music. Great guitar coming up. In a second. Guitar break of a lifetime. Mr. Jeff Beck. And here he comes. <laughs> Yes! I'm in heaven. I hope you're enjoying this at home as much as I am. Hey, you didn't tell me you had this, you old rascal. Oh, didn't I? The Radio Fab original lineup. Mm. Look at us. What a great bunch of guys, eh? <laughs> look, look, there's Jimmy Old, who went on to become the housewife's choice. Yeah, and there's Tony Looney, the ladies' favour calls. <laughs> and who's this ugly fellow in the middle? <laughs> That's right, it's me, the breakfast <laughs> DJ. <laughs> oh, look, there's Terry Wigod. <laughs> And who's this four-eyed fella in the front? He's the chap who did the six o'clock slot. Serious rock and seriously popular. Good old Dave Nice. Uh, yeah, that's me. Nicey, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 do you want to use your toilet, mate? Why? Well, because nature calls you pranit. Well, there's a public one just down the road, about a mile, mile and a half. Well, it'd be a lot easier if I used you. No, no, I'm sorry, it's just one thing I, I cannot bear. Can we stop filming now, please? I recently discovered I have a genius for writing poetry, so I've published an anthology of my work myself. Mm. This one's called The Rain. <coughs> the rain falls, pit patter, pit patter, upon the pavement. Tiny, watertight droplets merging on impact with each other, losing their individuality to become a puddle. New friends join them from... New friends join them from the sky. No longer pit padder, pit padder upon the pavement. Now, pud, 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 upon the puddle party. <coughs> at Radio Fab in the late 60s, the powers that be, or bead at the time, or as it were, uh, anyway, they was, uh, and these powers moved my show to a slot that abutted Nice's. That's right, our slots quite literally abutted each other, and a legendary period in the broadcaster of the communicator began. The DJ handover. Radio Fab! Hi, Nicey, you're looking cool today. Thanks, Smashy, you're looking pretty funky yourself. It's a great day out there. Is it? Glam! When Smash handed over to Nice, the nation stopped as ordinary people like you gathered round their trannies to hear our wise words fill their hearts with joy. Uh, is there lots of crumpet about? There certainly is. Lots of lovely crumpet out in the lovely weather. <laughs> and of course, hot weather means no brass for better bounce in Bristol, eh, Nicey? Okay, fellas, so if you're out there working on a building site or in a factory, and you see a terrific bit of crumpet walking down the street with lovely bouncy Bristols, why not give her a good old wolf whistle and brighten up her day? <laughs> Of course, uh, a lot of that stuff was a bit racy. You couldn't get away with that sort of thing today. What with all this political correctness, Lark? No, you'd have to say, I don't know, bouncing breasties. Or glands. <laughs> our enormous rapport with each other and our audience uh, lended itself quite naturally to television. Though, of course, a man who says presenting telly is as easy as presenting radio is a man who's talking rollocks. Our TV style had to be radically Number different. One, it's Top of the Pops! Hi, Chicks and Gregors, and welcome to Top of the Pops. Me smashing me old mate, Dave Nice. Got a great lineup tonight. Ashton Gardner and Dyke, the new seekers, and starting off with Rod Stewart. Not yet, Rod. So, what you been up to, mate? Anything good? I've been mowing the lawn, mate. Hush, Rod! <laughs> I've got quite a new lawnmower, and I just love mowing the lawn. Whenever it needs mowing, I'm out there mowing the lawn. Right, now, do you have to rake up those grass clippings yourself, mate, or do you have a special sort of unit attachment that goes on the back of your mower, automatically collects it above for you? Uh, which reminds me, uh, I just... All right, uh, my next the next one, Over the next few years, Top of the Pops and us were anonymous with each other.
This is Top of the Pops, and a weird surprise for you, Smash. Certainly have nice, because this week we're both hunchbacks. The bells, the bells. <laughs> Sanctuary. Good evening, and welcome to Top of the Pops. Crikey, nice, he's just read my mind. <laughs> Whoa, who's driving this thing? Well, it's 7.30, it's Thursday, and a mighty mongous welcome to Topulas of the Populars. <laughs> Doggone crazy days. But we didn't just have a laugh on the pops. Sometimes we championed things that needed championing -ing. We did. Ing. I remember one episode in 74, uh, we devoted entirely to uh, black music, and there was a lot of controversy about that one. Pop a doodle doo, and welcome to Top of the Pops, Smashy Man. Right, this is a special Top of the Pops where every group is black, man. Right, man. Right. You would not believe the complaints that show got. Even some black people complained, and it was a show devoted to them. I just don't think people were ready for an entirely black music show. Hmm. Uh, hosted by black DJs. I've written uh, a few pop songs myself in my time. It, tremendous hard work. Uh, I, I usually start by getting a sort of beautiful image in my mind. Uh, let's let's see now. Uh, yeah. Bucking horse, galloping free. Bucking, bucking, bucking horse. Bucking horse. Say your kisses for me. Say all your kisses for me. The early 70s was a cultural high point, culturally wise, in an English cultural high point sense. This was largely due to the power of DJs who gave ordinary people a clear message on how to dress and what to buy. Deptford Draylons. All right. This sensational settee, only ninety pounds, eleven and six. Got a family? Get one. Deppard Draylons, all right. Tarquin cold in winter. This funky pooch coat, only seven and six. You know where? Deppard Draylons, all right. These kinky slacks, just two pounds, three and five. Now that's what I call cool. You know where? Deppard Draylons, all right. <laughs> I don't know why they asked me to do Dead for Draylons rather than you, mate. Do you? No. I suppose that even though with a handover we were seen as a team, they must have thought I was just that little bit more popular than you, so I'd sell more of their goods. Oh, I don't think so, great mate. Oh, don't you, great mate? No, I don't, great, great mate. After all, if you look at the ratings for our shows, you see, uh, my prog was the most listened to on the station. That's because it was the breakfast show, superb buddy. It's traditionally the most listened to, regardless of DJ. Yep, but I started that tradition, didn't I, excellent chump? Being as I was the world's first national uh, radio fab breakfast DJ. It was my popularity which filled up that audience of over 10 billion listeners, uh, which tailed off substantially uh, after the handover when I went home, didn't it? My audience was one of quality rather than quantity, best pal. I didn't attract morons and scum in the same way that you seemed to. The early 70s were Hallican days, but then in 1976, a cancer appeared. Smash it. No, I'm sorry, mate. I object to that description. Oh, a cancer appeared. Smash it. Tell him about the cancer. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, you daft DJ. <laughs> You're breaking records. <laughs> you hopeless, bungling avatar. All right, mate. And that cancer became a cloud, a foreman, an illumin on the horizon. A cloud of Noah's Ark mongously huge proportions. Not a wispy little cloud, but a great big gung ho, dark and terrifying, nimbo cumulously, atrociously, atrocious cloud. Punk! <laughs> Yes, in 1976, by mistake, I invented punk when I had the misfortune to interview the Sex Pistols on TV. Well, 
I have with me the Sex Pistols. And boys, I believe you like swear words. Yeah. yeah. They give you a pleasure, do they? Oh, yes, they really turn us on. Well, will you swear for me now? Say shit. No. Oh, go on, say shit. Oh, shut no. up. Next question. All right, my next question to you, Mr. Oh, Rotten, nice is... I've always wanted to meet you. Shut up, you silly bitch. My <laughs> next question to you, Mr. Rotten, is will you say shit for this one of money? Shit. You disgusting youth! How dare you! Well, I'm shocked, and I'm sure you at home are too. Good night. The thing that punk lacked uh, was melody and nice tunes. So I solved that problem uh, by penning my own punk type tune. Because, you know, it is possible to be angry and melodious at the same time. And I actually released the, the song on my very own punk with melody label. I'll play it to you if you like. It's a... I don't care. No, no, yeah, yeah. I don't care because I'm on the dole. I ain't gonna get a job. Punky guitar. And a sort of swearing crescendo. On the rod, be rotten dough. A lot of punk is really excellent, and there are some excellent records that have stood the test of time excellently. Like this excellent one, you bastard, from the excellent ATV. Of course, 1977 didn't just see punk. More importantly, smashy went men in white coat mungously, for God's sake, get the elephant tranquilizer 100% certifiably loony. I don't like to talk about that, mate. Well, nationwide did. Kept me up all Christmas Eve. Two years ago And it would sure embarrass her Hello, as concern mounts for the mental health of DJ Mike Smash We ask tonight, what can be done? It's now two months since Smash's wife Tessa walked out on him for another man But it's not only he who's suffering, the nation is too For since that day, his playlist has featured just one record. That was Honey by Bobby Goldsborough, and that was for you, Tessa, my darling. And this is for you, too. And it's Honey by Bobby Goldsborough. See the tree, how big it's grown, but friend, it hasn't been too long. It wasn't big. And Smashy continues his campaign in his spare time with an all-night vigil every night outside Tessa's new love nest. It was a particularly harrowing time for me. Uh, at first, I received sympathy and support from my bosses at Radio Fab, but after three months, uh, Tessa wasn't back and I was out the door. They sacked me. Uh, I started a petition for my reinstatement and got literally tens of signatures, which was totally tremendous. But what I really needed was support from inside Radio Fab, and that wasn't so forthcoming. You certainly find out who your friends are at times like that. People who you've worked with for quite literally yonks who aren't even prepared to sign a piece of paper on your behalf. It was the beginning of the wilderness years for me. This is Mike Smash on Radio Wilderness, the greatest radio station in the Swindon area. We have a whole lot more fun here than on national radio, don't we? Meanwhile, I went from strength to strength to strength to strength to strength. By the early 80s, I even had my own comedy TV show. The variety of material I wrote, oh, it was absolutely terrific. It was irreverent. Hello, Diana, Prince Charles here, your husband. As heir to the throne, I demand to see your boobies. <laughs> it was topical. Hello, Fred Flamier, this is my bird. She's got safety pins on. They're through her boobies. But above all, it was good, clean, harmless family fun. 
Havo, chick in the china van here. This my new life. Let's see what her boobies like. <laughs> Lily, they're the same shape as her eyes. No wonder her name's Slitty Titties. Good, clean family fun. The early 80s harked the heralding of a brand new age of new romance. But how was Radio Fab to cater for this sophisticated generation of crazy looking gherkins? The answer was obvious. I was returned. Uh oh, <laughs> who's this on the phone? Hello? Hello? <laughs> oh no, it's Mr. Deaf. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Deaf, how are you today? Hello? <laughs> oh no, Mr. Deaf is stone deaf. <laughs> right, here's a bunch of crazy loonies who are almost as bonkers as me. Man! Of course, Steve Bright had been doing loony phone characters for a couple of years before you, hadn't he, mate? Uh, yeah, but uh, I uh, preempted him by doing them in an after he did it type way. No, I don't understand you. Oh, don't you? Well, at least I try to bring a little fun into people's lives instead of spoiling their fun by spoiling their fun. Well, I'm, I'm going now. It's your decision, Daniel! What do you mean, spoiling their fun? Well, b uh, banning records and, and things. Rock with nice. Listeners, I have in my hand a piece of filth, the new single from Paul McCartney in the Frog's Chorus, which contains the refrain, bum, 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 bum. I don't want to hear about your nether regions, Mr. McCartney, and I'm not playing this shit on my show. Here's Frankie Goes to Hollywood, relax. <laughs> But uh, although you banned records, Nicey, you didn't ban aid, did you, mate? What? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> oh, glory be! Imagine our surprise and joy when one day in 1984, the soon-to-be Sir Bob rang us up and quite literally begged us to appear on the Band Aid single. We accepted. Well, um, Smashy and Nicey had the prime time slot on the uh, only national pop station at the time. And uh, I went and told them what I wanted to do because if they didn't play the record, then obviously uh, it wasn't going to be a hit. And they said they wouldn't play it unless I let them sing it. So, um, what could I do? I didn't really have a choice. the greatness continued as I got me own Saturday evening TV variety oh, show. They're all covered in Blavon. Smashes Saturday Smiles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the smiles must cease and the sadness start as we move over to the blobbing room here at Harry Cleft for Smashy's Saturday Sad Spot and welcome little Tina from Kent. <laughs> Tina, my darling, you're not a happy little bunny at the moment, are you? No, because two months ago, Tina's mummy and daddy bought her a special prezi, a little baby puppy. And Tina named her gorgeous new fluffy puppy, Chuffy. Tina, where's Chuffy now? I don't know. No, you don't know because two weeks ago, Chuffy ran off and you still have no news of him, do you? No. Well, we have news of Chuffy, but it isn't good. So grab a Kleenex as we welcome Ken from Pondyfrack. <laughs> Ken May Hyde, sit down. Now, Ken, you were driving your very heavy lorry near Tina's home that afternoon, weren't you? Yes, that's right, I was. Hmm. Tell us what happened. Well, uh, this little dog ran onto the road in front of me, and I... Uh... Was there a bump thump, Ken? Yes, there was. A bump thump as the little dog went under the wheels of my lorry. Hmm. And you got out of your cab, and there was a little dog. Was it Chuffy? Yes, it was. Was he dead? No, he wasn't. But he was very badly crushed, and his poor little eyes looked totally bewildered, uh, and he was yelping. Mm. Because he was in great, great pain? Yes, that's right. Mm. Now, Ken, you keep something in your cab for emergencies, don't you? I do, yes. A sledgehammer. Was it this sledgehammer? 
Yes, it was. <laughs> right. So to save him more pain. <sighs> Tina, we are truly sorry, my darling, but you know, nobody goes home empty-handed on this show. Because here's Chuffy now in his beautifully crafted Smashy Saturday Sad Spot coffin. Ken, here's your teardrop medal. And Tina, here's your teardrop medal. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken, Tina and Chuffy. All right, everyone, cheer up. Come on, let's go and see if Harry at the Harry's Left Car was sat on Boy George yet. Yes! Yes! Of course, radio remained me spiritual, Herb, in a quite literally church mongers type way. Although, by the late 80s, uh, some of our old buddies began to leave the station and uh, were replaced with young DJs. Some of them were so young, they were still in their 30s. It is true. Well, of course it's true. Viewers, it's been 25 years since the launch of National Radio Fab. I've been invited to this exclusive party to celebrate. So, guys, uh, the place is bulging with Fab FM DJs. You looking forward to the party? Certainly are. It's going to be great to see all our great mates from over the years. We're going to have a great time tonight. Go to memory lane. Certainly are. Uh, except that I can't actually see anyone we know, mate. Sorry, sir, you can't come in. I don't understand. I'm on the guest list. No, mate, you're on the blacklist. <laughs> Simon Bubbly, the breakfast DJ. Jubbly bubbly to meet you guys. Uh, Tom, Martin. You just don't understand, do you? I mean, I'm the top disc jockey on Capital Old. Hi, Simon Redhead, the loon in the afternoon. In. What are you doing yourselves these days? We're still on Radio Fab FM. Oh, magic. I'll have to listen to you sometime. Ciao. Hurry. Push. Oh. Simon, joke, humorous bloke. Ow! <laughs> Simon Northern accent, serious world music evening slot. Never listen to your show, but it's tough to have a couple of old folks here. This is my sister. Hi, Simon female. Oh, Dad likes you. Oh, great. Shall we go? Yep. All right, girls. Slap! Got off. I stopped going to social functions of a shoe business type nature around then and restricted me public appearances to me charity work. About which, uh, under no circumstances, do I wish to talk. Oh, give me strength. Well, mate, now, if you'd done as much tremendous good work for charity as me, you wouldn't like I to talk do. about it. I, I, I do charity work. I just don't like to talk about it. I don't like to talk about it. That's the difference. Of course you don't. And you certainly don't like to talk about doing the London Marathon, do you, mate? Come on, Dyson, nice keep up. I've got a bloody stick. Well, keep your rhino suit on, mate. Oh, shut up. <laughs> And, of course, we're not even allowed to mention your appearance on Comic Relief, are we? Hello. Tonight we look at a shocking new discovery from the world of dinosaurs. These creatures have been extinct for over 70 million years. But 50 years ago, an eccentric scientist successfully cloned the DNA from two fossilised breeds, the moronic Brontosaurus and the vicious Velociraptor, creating the terrifying hybrid Dreadfully Borus Jaded Lotocraptor, or DJ. <laughs> this breed is both stupid and dangerous, threatening human life with imminent extinction with its deadly use of dreadful old music and idiotic opinions, bringing about brain death within Hey, minutes. hey, hey, no way! I'm sorry, how dare you! It's only a joke. It's no bloody joke, pal. I made this country great. You come along with your smart attic opinions. You're a bloody menace to here. No way! And they also have no sense of humor. Hey! Don't say that! You don't say that! No! Were you upset when they broadcast that sketch, mate? No, no. It was all deliberate. I thought it'd make the sketch funnier if I pretended to fly off the handle. I wanted them to broadcast it. You wanted them to? Yes, of course. Is that why you threatened to sue the BBC if they did? Oh, shut off, you simpering creep! This is uh, Tessa's old bedroom. I still keep it exactly as it was the day she left. Uh, here, the bedclothes are still a rumpled and a crumpled. I've plasticked everything to keep it fresh. <laughs> uh, she always used to insist on separate bedrooms. Um, Though she did used to allow me to visit when she didn't have a headache. Then we used to have Nookie. <laughs> it's a, a testament to the past, of course. Uh, I, I'm over her now. Thank God. Tessa! I'll show you a tape of a great DJ. This is me in 1974. It's the bloody way it should be done. How do you work this bloody thing? Daniel set it up. Daniel! 
Damn you! Oh, God, he's left me. In the bloody shit. Well, I don't care. Sod him. Come on, you bloody thing. Work! If uh, philosophers, boffins and eggheads at Oxbridge University were to study us, they'd see us in a biblical sense, with Nicey as a sort of angry uh, Old Testament wrath of rock type guy. You bastard bloody thing! And me as a more sensitive, caring, charity-loving New Testament type bloke. I suppose uh, I play gentle Jesus to Nicey's God. This is Mike Smash, the world's favourite DJ, saying blubmungously and for the very last time, although I can't quite believe it. Ba 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 dang a dang 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 ba 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 dang a dang 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 ba 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 dang 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 wee ba 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 bye bye. And this is Dave Nice saying I invented the 60s and they were a roaring success. In the 70s I founded Glamorous Rock. That too was phenomenal. In the 80s Smashy and I ruled the world. Now it's the 90s and the new controller of Fab FM thinks we're for the scrap heap. Well I've got a message for you, Mr. So called Mr. Sir, from Barkman Turner Overdrive. You think we're finished? You ain't seen nothing. I come here every day to change the flowers and just sit and sort of ponder on what a great and profound influence she's been on my life. She's not actually dead yet, but I think that when she does go, she'll be tremendously happy here, don't you? I'm not a happy man, you know. Everyone I've ever loved has left me. Because... I've abused them. They just don't understand what it's like to be so bloody shy. I'm so bloody terminally shy. What are my dreams for the future? Well, I'd love to see an end to mankind suffering, war, plague, famine, pestilence type stuff. But most of all, I'd like to present an episode of Top Gear. I hate Smasher, you know. I bloody hate that man. And I'll tell you why. Because he's so nice, because he's such a bloody good bloke. Because he's such a bloody good 